It was a dark and stormy night. A lone engineer was prototyping in their workshop, but critical components were missing and were on order. But the storm had washed away the riverbanks and the bridge had collapsed. It wasn't humanly possible to deliver at this hour. Somehow, a motorbike dispatch rider had leapt the raging torrent. It could only be the Ghost Rider. Parcel for Mr. Clark. Hello, I'm Andy and welcome to Element 14 Presents. So let's see how we put that Ghost Rider effect together. We've got a combination of effects. We've got uh, the flames, which are driven by a, a couple of blower fans. We've got some lighting effects and the whole thing is controlled using a Bluetooth uh, low energy remote control. Arduino Nano 33BLE, NeoPixel LED, blower fans, a 11 volt LiPo battery, some red and yellow LEDs, some switches, a Darlington driver chip, a power boost and smaller LiPo battery for the remote and some magnets. As I wasn't quite sure how this effect was going to work, I decided to prototype with smaller and simpler components. So I got some uh, little dinky fans, um, and I've, I've taped some material to them, experimented with different shapes. Um, so one of the key things I've learned there is that the material needs not to be uh, folded or creased uh, because that provides stiffening. And the other key thing is to place the material right down the center of the airflow. So we've got air going both sides of the, the material and that causes that uh, flickering effect. I also prototype different positions of LEDs and I've discovered that the backlit LEDs work the best for that. So I've used just a little NeoPixel LED, experimented with different colors, um, and now I need to prototype the code uh, with just a couple of small components and an Arduino, Arduino Uno. And it means that if I uh, made any errors or blew anything up, it uh, didn't have any uh, side effects on my uh, slightly more expensive Arduino Nano boards. So with this little test rig, we basically got a blower fan and a 3D printed uh, widget, I think that's probably the best word. Um, and the idea is that the air comes up and through these slots and then the flames attach to uh, this bit. But uh, unfortunately, when we fire it up, it's not really got enough umph. So I've got these bigger fans. I think they came out of a computer at some point. You can see they've got the uh, sense wires on them so you can read the tachometer and get the speed feedback. Probably won't be using that. I'll probably just use an open circuit PWM signal. So what I've done is I've boxed this one up here in some cardboard housing, attached my same flames to it. You can see we've got a nice uh, combination of the light and the movement. And if I uh, turn the lights off, we'll see it looks even better. So the BLA specification is a thousand or so pages long um, and I've read a little bit of it. Um, so um, some of the key things to learn are the terminologies. So there's what they call characteristics or generic characteristics. And those are things like a switch or a heart sensor or a speaker or a display, the IO effectively. And then there's what they call services, and those are bundles of attributes all combined together. A health tracker may have a motion sensor on it and a heart sensor, um, and a weather sensor may have a wind sensor, a temperature sensor, and a, um, a barometer, for example. Um, and those are uh, bundled into collections that you can uh, connect to. The last uh, point uh, is what they call advertising. Um, so that's how the initial connection to the Bluetooth modules are made. So let's take a look at the code. So the code for the remote control is based on a sample from the Arduino library. So the sensor tag button sample, and that defines a simple characteristic of a button, uh, which is given, being given a unique identifier. That attempts to connect to a device 
uh, that has that characteristic and it will disconnect if it doesn't find it. And then for testing that, I've been using a piece of software called NF Connect from Nordic, the people who make the microcontroller for the Arduino. And that runs on your mobile phone and you configure it to have the right properties. And then you can uh, choose to advertise that. Once it's advertised, the Arduino finds it, checks the service, finds the service code. And then we can go into the characteristics on the phone and we can send a left button press or a right button press, which are the values one and two, uh, binary code effectively, 10 and zero one. And that simplifies testing substantially and you can, we can also run it as the uh, client. So the motion sensor on the Arduino is what's called a nine axis sensor. It's got uh, three directions uh, for detecting um, rotation. So the uh, gyroscope does that. It's got three accelerometers so it can detect uh, sudden changes of uh, speed and direction. And the last sensor is a effectively a compass. So it did, can detect uh, where the uh, board is orientated um, with regard to the room. And by combining all those three sensors, you can get very accurate uh, positioning and, and motion profiles. So similar to how I did with the fans, I prototyped the code and I used the, the library from Arduino and I've installed that library for the motion sensor. And that comes with some samples. So I use the accelerometer sample and I've uploaded that to the Arduino Nano. And that generates a, three signals coming out in the form of comma separated values. And that allows us then to use the serial plotter that comes with the Arduino IDE. And we can see the signals that are being generated by the sensors. And, and by looking at those signals, I've worked out that um, I can use a simple level detection to work out that uh, the movement's happening. And we see the spikes from the movement. There are actually more uh, sophisticated examples that use AI to look for particular patterns, which I know uh, people have used for sort of like magic wand type effects, that kind of thing. Hi, I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore the world of electronics in the realm of DC, audio frequencies, RF, and into the visible spectrum of light. Here we take electrical engineering topics out of the boring old textbook and bring them into life through demonstration and test. Sometimes we even build stuff, and if there's a way to test the concept at hand, we'll put it on a scope and measure it, and in doing so, hopefully bring it to daylight. So if that sounds like a good time to you, come hang out with me every couple weeks here at Element 14 Presents. All right, see you there. So here we have the remote control board. We've got the battery, the power boost. So that boosts it up from 3.7 to a, a 5 that the board then converts down to the 3.3 it needs. We could probably manage without that, but it's got a charger as well built in. So uh, it's a useful little add-in board to have. I've then got a misprint, which I'm using as a spacer to electrically isolate the boards. And then the nano sits on top. And then I've got a lid on top, power switch on the end. And then the idea is it will strap to the wrist. We're going to use some Velcro straps. And then as we get movement, that accelerometer will pick that up and send the signal to the remote control. So for controlling the fans, I'm using one of these little motor driver boards. They're bi-directional, so I didn't need that feature. So I've just wired up the direction pins, one to ground and one to uh, VCC. I was using the PWM inputs and the standby pins to shut the system down and to control the speed. But when I looked into the Arduino code, what I found was there's a limitation of the board, which means I can only have for active analog writes at any one time. There is a clever hack around that, which I might try, but for the moment, I've just digitally controlled the motors on and off. So the LEDs are controlled via a transistor array, a dialing transistor array. That's the ULN2003. And that just means that the combined power of all the LEDs is not being uh, sunk into the uh, Arduino, which might cause it to overheat and become 
unstable. The, each of the LEDs has got a series of resistor. I actually um, wired that directly to the leg of the resistor so that my uh, wiring on the uh, main board was a bit simpler to do. For the power supply, I've got the large RC battery. So that is a three cell battery, puts out 11 volts. That was fine for the Arduino and for the fans, but for the RGB LED, I needed five volts. So I've added in a DC to DC converter, also known as a universal battery eliminator circuit, or UBEC. So the additional lights for the skull are designed with a little 3D printed housing, three big um, LEDs and a bit of steel mesh underneath. And then what we can do is we can add a magnet and then they can clip onto the shoulders there and uh, shine up on the skull to give an additional lighting effect. So my idea for the main housing was to attach it using magnets but uh, as I've increased the, the scale and size of the fans, the weight of those is just a bit too much. So I put in this backpack and it means that the, uh, the flames are just sort of shoulder height. And then we've got our two fans, uh, the battery, the uh, controller boards tucked underneath there, and uh, the sort of main shut off uh, power connector there. Um, which disables the power and we can also kill the power by unplugging the battery there. To put it in the effect together then, we've got those shoulder mounted lights giving the side light on the skull. We've got the two flames there, powered by the fans and backlit by the LEDs. Uh, the skull mask itself and a bit of black cloth to uh, cover up the face, another one for the neck. A uh, big old chain there over the shoulder, that just came from a prop shop. Um, a cheap old leather jacket finishes off the effect. So over and all, I'm quite pleased with the results. I think uh, we're going to have a very fun Halloween with this costume. And of course, if you're making any Halloween costumes with electronic effects, then please let us know on the Element 14 community.